Ladies and gentlemen, James Lane here. This is a very, very special episode 139 of the American Revely podcast. And uh, we normally cover politics and a lot of things like that. But I wanted to do one episode covering a little bit of cryptocurrency and a little bit of the Dogecoin because there's no reason why the Dogecoin, what Elon Musk calls the people's coin, the people's cryptocurrency, can't be used by we the people, can't be used by the people of the United States across this country that may not know about it, that may not trust in cryptocurrency, that may not know anything about it. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not one of these guys because I've seen it just like you. Everybody's now a financial advisor. Everybody's now a crypto guy. I am not, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be. I'm not going to give you any advice. All I'm going to do is do something that a lot of people haven't. I'm going to read to you and talk to you for like five minutes about what cryptocurrency is, and then I'm going to read to you and talk to you for 10 to 15 minutes about what Dogecoin is and why it's so popular. And I'm going to tell you what to do, right? I'm going to give you a brief idea of like where to search for how to figure out how to do it. And then I'm going to go bye bye. And it's going to be up to you what you want to do. But as somebody on the right, as a, 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 a fiscally conservative, socially more libertarian, I'm like half libertarian, half conservative kind of person, because I've got beliefs on both sides. But I, I'm telling you, I believe in this. I've done well on this. All right, we're not going to get into that, but you need to start thinking about cryptocurrency. Elon Musk this Saturday is going to be on Saturday Night Live. He's going to make huge announcements about cryptocurrency, do some kind of skit, some kind of thing. But I believe that crazy things are going to happen after this Saturday. So it might be worth your time to do a little research into what this is and maybe whether you should do something about it. All right. I just don't want to see other people on the right miss out. All right. I missed out on Bitcoin. I missed out on stock opportunities. I was always the person that was like, nah, I'm not going to do this. But I finally did something. And man, I, I, it made a difference. So I think you should take a look. I really believe you should. If you don't know what you've heard it, you know, what blockchain, you've heard blockchain technology. You've heard all the I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you what Dogecoin is. All right. We're going to talk about it. We're going to look at the much wow coin of the century. We're going to see how far to the moon this could go. All right, we're going to do it. I'm at least doing it, but maybe we can do it together. Maybe you will get into it too, and we'll talk about it here and there. All right. But honestly, this is the only episode I'm planning on doing about cryptocurrency. This isn't a crypto channel, but I think it's important enough for me to let the Patriots know. All right. So this will be an interesting episode. It'll be a little more informative than normal. I'll try to keep it a uh, light and fun. I'll try to keep it short so it's not too dry. All right. But I really, really, really believe that it's worth it's worth your time to look into. It is. All right. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not going to give you any kind of advice that's going to benefit me. I just want to let my friends, my patriots, my brothers and sisters know what is going on. Check out episode 139 next. Ladies and gentlemen, James Lane here. This is episode 139 of the American Revely podcast. I'm sure you've heard by now that Dogecoin has changed people's life, that it could change your life. But you know what's changed my life, ladies and gentlemen? Life changed tea. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a lot of stomach issues lately. I really do. All right. I, I may have a, an issue that even requires a small surgery. I don't know. All right. I don't, but I know that, that I've got a CT scan coming up. I've had gas for a year. I've had stomach issues for a year. They think it might be a hiatal hernia where my stomach's like caught halfway. It's, it's a mess. It's a mess, but I have seen some relief from this amazing product that I found. I loved them so much. They became my sponsor. Life Change Tea. All right. You go to getthetea.com. Getthetea.com. All right. G E T T H E T E A dot com. Get yourself some life change tea. They have mint flavor, regular flavor, pomegranate flavor. It's a gentle cleanse. You can drink it daily. It's going to clean out all the waste that's stuck in your organs, stuck in your intestines, stuck in the cavity of your body. It's going to kill the bloat. It's going to help you with gas. You're going to feel better. You can have more energy. It really is fantastic stuff. I like it. It doesn't give you nuclear explosions in the, in the bathroom, in the toilet, if you know what I mean. You're not sitting on the, on the, on the bowl for three hours going, ah, while your kids are sitting there outside the door scared because of the scary noises coming from, is there a demon, dada? I mean. <laughs> you don't want that. 
You want something that's quick, easy, and gentle. Get the tea.com. Get yourself some life change tea. Promo code James. My first name, guys. Promo code James gets you free shipping and handling. If you're not convinced yet, stick around for two or three minutes after this doji episode. And I'll put a little ad in there for life change tea. You will be convinced after that if you're not now, but just skip it. Go to get the tea.com right now. Get yourself some life change tea. Promo code James, free shipping and handling. You won't be sorry. I guarantee it, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys for being here. How's your day going so far? It's been crazy. My week's been crazy. The weeks have been crazy. I have a business trip in Chicago. You see all this? I have this whole rig here. I have three monitors. I got mixers. I got all I have business in Chicago. I got to ship. I got to figure out how to get all this crap on the plane and get it to Chicago with all my stuff It's going to be. Trust me, I got a whole plus I got to update the website. Plus, I still have work. Plus, I have an MRI on Monday. Plus, it just goes on and on. But the American Revely is still rolling. James Lane is still here in pain, not in pain, sitting in the chair, uh, sciatica, twitching on. Uh, twi- 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 I hurt, but I'm here for you because the doge beckons, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's important. It's important. We're in a different world. It's 2021, guys. It's 2021. You have to understand that after COVID, after the pandemic, after the 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 the, the steel after the craziness, right? After the oppression, ongoing imp- oppression, this world is different. Currencies are different. Jobs are forever different. Things are different. So something you might not have trusted before might be something to look into now. I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm just telling you to do some research. If you've been blowing it off, ah, eh, Doge, ah, eh, crypto, just read. Please read for me. Do me a favor. I'm going to, before I even go into this, because most people are writing little articles reporting about this. I want to read the first two or three pages of this uh, uh, Galaxy Digital Research uh, uh, pamphlet that came out. All right. It's a very, very important research pamphlet that really lays out everything about Dogecoin that's going on. And there's a lot of metrics and boring stuff. We're not going to even get into that because it's a basic episode. But even the first two or three pages are fantastic. No one's going over that. It's not on any podcast. I am the only one. All right. But before we even go there, I know there's going to be a lot of folks that, that haven't had the, 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 the experience that don't even know what crypto is. So I pulled up a Forbes article. All right. A Forbes article, Kate Ashford and John Schmidt uh, Schmidt wrote it. All right. This is back from December 2020. All right. And it's about crypto. It's going to tell you what crypto is. It's going to tell you a little bit how it works. I'm not going to go through this huge article. Right. I'm going to I'm literally going to just read to you a little bit uh, about what blockchain is, what crypto is and how it works. And then we're going to read about Doge. All right, guys. So if you're ready for this, do me a favor. If you're on Gab, sign up for my page. Follow me on Gab at the, uh, not at the James Lane, at American underscore Reveille. If you're on Parler, at the James Lane. I would prefer you'd follow me on Odyssey, all right? If you're on Odyssey, it's a different YouTube. It's better than YouTube. Go to odyse.com. I'm there under American, uh, uh, American underscore Reveille as well. All right, we got everything out. We're bringing on more writers. We're bringing on more podcasters. We're going to be doing more productions. It's really cool. We have so much cool stuff in the future coming. If you'd like, sign up the newsletter below in the uh, uh, details section or in the description section, excuse me, or just go to the website, AmericanRevely.com, R-E-V-E-I-L-L-E.com. Sign up for the newsletter there. That's where you'll find all the information about what we did the previous week, what's upcoming with the company, and that's where I make my announcements for our competitions. We're going to have a $200 competition coming up, sticker competition. Where can you place it? What can you do to create a stir, ladies and gentlemen? Not a bad stir, just people seeing these stickers, all right? We got a lot of American Revely stickers pumped out and the winner of that will get 200 bucks. It's not officially announced yet. The rules and regs aren't out yet. But if you want to know first, you better sign up for the newsletter in the description section below or on the website, AmericanRevely.com. If you love this at the end, you can always donate some crypto to us. You can always donate some dollars to us in the description section below. There's a support us uh, link and there's also a support us link on the website. And we greatly appreciate that it goes right into the American Revely, into expanding our operations so we can entertain, empower and enlighten the patriots across this great country, folks. So without further ado, Let's read a little bit, all right? Cryptocurrency. This is what we're talking about. That's what Dogecoin is, is decentralized digital money. It's based on blockchain technology. 
You may be familiar with the most popular versions, Bitcoin and Ethereum. We all heard of those by now, right? But there's more than 5,000 different cryptocurrencies in circulation. You can use crypto to buy regular goods and services, though many people invest in crypto as they would in other assets like stock or precious metals like gold and silver. While cryptocurrency is a novel and exciting asset class, purchasing it can be risky as you must take on a fair amount of research to fully understand how they work. That's what I'm telling you. It's not like stock or anything else. You have to research. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to research so that you can get into this before things blow up even more. All right. I, I'm personally investing. I personally think they will. I'm not a financial guy. I don't do this. I don't, I'm not one of those pop-up sites that are out there. That's just financial stuff every day with live streams about the stonks. That's not what I do, but I felt this was important enough to tell my fel my fellow patriots to give my fellow patriots a heads up. All right. There's a lot of you guys out there that are, that are in all different age ranges. All right. From, from 35 to 65. As we get older, we get more stubborn on, on investing in some of these things. I don't want you to take out hundreds of thousands of dollars or anything like that. I want you to think about taking a tiny, tiny amount of something and looking at diversifying yourself somehow. I'm not going to tell you how to use it or what to do. I'm just going to tell you to do some research if you're not already. Uh, it, it, trust me. Think Apple. Think Microsoft. It's my belief. Plain and simple. All right. When it says you can use crypto to buy regular goods and services, they're going to get into that in the other one. As more, as more people accept crypto, you'll be able to use it more. Look, you want KFC in Canada? All the KFC chicken places in Canada take Dogecoin. All right? All of them. Newegg.com for computer parts. So you can get yourself new hard drives, new RAM processors, those five, six, ten thousand dollar computers. They take Dogecoin. Sports teams are taking all people have to do is imagine if Apple or not Apple, Amazon starts taking Dogecoin. All people have to do is adopt it and it becomes something. All right. It's a currency. The people value seashells, those seashells are worth something. All right. But that's not completely how it works. I want to tell you what cryptocurrency is and how it works. A cryptocurrency is a medium of exchange. It's digital. It's encrypted. It's decentralized. Unlike the US dollar or the euro, there's no central authority that manages and maintains the value. Instead, these tasks are broadly distrib uh, distributed among the cryptocurrency users via the internet. So it rests on all of our shoulders. How valuable do we find it? How valuable is Dogecoin to us? Is Bitcoin to us? And you can obviously see by some of the skyrocketing values you've seen lately. It's been crazy. Bitcoin. All right. It was the first cryptocurrency. It was first outlined in principle by Satoshi Nakamoto in a 2008 paper titled Bitcoin, a peer to peer electronic cash system. Nakamoto described the project as an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust. Right. With the dollar, you have to trust. Right. You have to trust that there's something backing up that paper dollar. With cryptocurrency, they use blockchain ledger technology to prove the trust. And we're going to talk about what that is in a second. That cryptographic proof comes in the form of transactions that are verified and recorded in a form of program called a blockchain. That is what that is and how it gets to that. All right. And now I'm going to tell you what blockchain is. A blockchain is an open distributed ledger that records transitions in code. Sorry, transactions, not tra It records transitions in codes. Yeah, transitions. If you know who that is, you can put that in the comment section below. In practice, it's a little like a checkbook that's distributed across countless computers around the world. Transactions are recorded in blocks that are then linked together on a chain of previous cryptocurrency transactions. All right? They're recorded in blocks and then clink, 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 linked together, all right? They're linked together in a chain made up of all the previous transactions. 
so they can't be unchained. Do you see where I'm coming from? Imagine a book where you write down everything you spend on money every day, says Buki Okoro, CEO and co-founder of African cryptocurrency exchange Quidax. Each page is similar to a block, and the entire book, a group of pages, is called a blockchain. You see that? It's not an actual block and chain. It's the book. It's the compilation of the ledger all together. That's the block and the chain. All right. Uh, uh, what it says is with a blockchain, everyone who uses cryptocurrency has their own copy of this book. They create a unified transaction record with it. Software logs each new transaction as it happens. And every copy of blockchain is updated simultaneously. It's updated at the same time with new information, keeping all records identical and accurate, meaning you cannot forge or steal or lie or, you know, you can steal Bitcoin. But I mean, like the process in which the accuracy of crypto is unfallible. That's what it's getting at. To prevent fraud, each transaction is checked using one of two main validation techniques called proof of work or proof of stake. Now they go into all of that. But if I went into all of that, this would be a five, four, uh, not five, but like a two, three hour podcast, right? Because I would have to go through that and then read all of the other one. I'm trying to give you guys a quick 20, 30 dirty. That's what I want you to have a quick 20, 30 dirty. All right. That used to refer to something else in my younger 20s. A quick 20, 30 dirty, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want a long podcast for you. I want you to briefly understand what crypto is from this, understand what blockchain is from this, and then understand what Dogecoin is. And then I'm going to vaya con Dios. I'm going to go with God and let you make whatever decisions you want to make, my friends. And it's off my back because I did my job. I told my patriot brothers and sisters about it. All right. That's what I can do. This isn't my normal forte. It's not, but I have an MBA. I did do corporate finance. I did do accounting math. All right. I do know a tiny bit. I do work in electronics. Anyway, anyway, I want to go back to the Dogecoin uh, document here, the Galaxy Digital Research document. And it's funny because the name of the research is called Dogecoin, the most honest shit coin. <laughs> It's, it's funny. I find it funny. I don't know. It was written by Alex Thorne, the head of firmwide research. All right. That's at Galaxy Digital Research. It's a research firm. Uh, they, they do research on financial stuff. They're a crypto uh, 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 investment corporation. That's what they do. All right. And we're going to read about that research. And it's really important stuff. It really is. I'm going to try to keep it light. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep it funny. I'm going to try to, to, to get through it so that we can understand it. And we're going to get the F out of here. 2030 dirty, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. On the back of a major resurgence in cryptocurrency prices, along with retail trading manias fueled by mobile trading apps and Reddit-born trade ideas, Dogecoin, I know some people call it doggy coin, and I like calling it Dogecoin, has emerged as the best performing crypto year to date. In this report, we tell the story of the whimsical cryptocurrency and explain why, despite its shortcomings, Dogecoin is one of crypto's most interesting phenomenon. It's one of their most interesting phenomena. Honestly, we're going to talk about it. We're not going to read the whole thing, but I am going to, like I said, the first one, two, three pages are, are, are very important for you to understand why you need to know where it came from and what Elon's doing and where it might go. Just according to this research report, at least the cold hard facts, very currency, much coin. It's meme stuff. I don't know. I'm getting old myself, but I find it funny and cute. Dogecoin has always been a joke and the joke keeps getting funnier. The Shiba Inu themed cryptocurrency whose community once sponsored the Jamaican bobsled team as a part of a campaign called Cool Runnings 2 is today worth as much as Lloyd's Banking Group, twice as much as Standard Chartered and three times as much as Credit Suisse. The joke currency created to mock Bitcoin and the rise of altcoins way back in 2013 and 2014 is today worth more than $70 billion and has rocketed to the top of the crypto list with enormous trading volume, growing ownership and celebrity endorsements. I have 20,000 Dogecoins. I bought them when they were like a penny. The appeal of Dogecoin has always been its honesty. Dogecoin is an open source peer-to-peer -peer digital 
currency favored by Shiba Inu's worldwide. Shiba Inu's worldwide. It's cute. <laughs> Proclaims the official website. Unlike many other cryptocurrency projects, Dogecoin does not seek or even pretend to be anything more than the world's most fun currency. There's no grand vision, no pronouncements over how Dogecoin will change the world. Dogecoin had a fair launch, like Bitcoin, meaning there was no token pre-sale or, or mine or VC fundraise. Consequently, there's no business development or marketing promoting the coin for the benefit of any insiders. It's ultimately a fork of Bitcoin. So while not novel, at least the tech is reliable and known, and it's not new. It's one of the oldest altcoins, more than 1.5 years older than Ethereum, and its founder has even disappeared, not necessarily as dramatically as Satoshi, of course. There are major deficiencies. Dogecoin has zero development. Few people run full nodes, and those who do often have difficulty downloading the chain or staying synced with the network. There's no market infrastructure, barely any software. Uh, and despite being more than seven years old, many exchanges still don't support it. There's no serious long-term narrative or use case supporting its wide adoption. And it's not clear whether Doge holders are dogmatic about the coin's long-term uh, prospects. We're not dogmatic. When we set out to write this report, we expected to find what we've always known. Dogecoin is a joke. But it's also a joke, not credible, resilient, or adopted. But as we reviewed the data, and this is where it gets interesting, folks. This is where you're going to start understanding. I know I went through a lot of stuff. We found that despite its deficiencies, Dogecoin was remarkably strong. All right. It has remarkably strong fundamentals, a powerful force and forces are supporting its rise. It has a genuine origin story. It has longevity. It's lasted. All right. You know what consistency and discipline do in your life. The Shiba Inu has consistency and discipline and a growing community of users who appear determined to meme a Shiba Inu themed global currency into existence. I'm one of them, folks. We don't expect Dogecoin to become the world's most valuable cryptocurrency anytime soon, but the Doge should not be ignored. So in this report, we tell the story of Dogecoin and offer insights into its use, growth, and maturation from a moderately funny joke to a joke for the ages, the world's most widely adopted satirical currency. That's why I like it, folks. And Elon even had said before, how ironic, right? How improbable. How improbable would it be? I think it would be amazing if a freaking coin with a Shiba Inu on it became the currency of the world. That would make me happy. Doge barks at the moon. All right. We're going to go through this page. We're going to talk about the history of the Doge coin. We're going to talk about some of the other stuff. We're going to go through the chart where the founders went. Right. And we're going to talk about this year, the year of the Doge. We're going to talk about Elon Musk's involvement. So maybe it's like eight pages we're going to get into, not three, but there's a lot of pictures. So it'll be fun to, to show you and talk to you. I really, uh, I really, 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 really got into this. All right. And I think it's something you should look into, too. I really do. At least research it and make some decisions. Doge barks at the moon. In 2021, the highest returns in the digital assets market have come not from serious projects like Bitcoin and Ethereum, but instead from one of the sector's oldest coins, Dogecoin. Dogecoin is up a whopping 9,537%. I, I thought that that might be enough to sway you. Year to date, at the time of writing, and is the fourth largest digital asset by market cap at more than $70 billion. The price of Dogecoin and select assets, this is January 1st, folks. Look, January, February, March, April, boom! You saw that, right? You see it on the chart. If you're listening, we're looking at a blue line that's like, eh, eh, February. It's like, eh, March. It's like, eh, April. It's like, eh, and then April, like 12, 13, 14 comes along and like a rocket took it up. I wonder what happened. I wonder. Dogecoin is not trading thin. Volumes have skyrocketed with as much as 70 billion trading hands on its busiest day ever recently. Even in the last 24 hours, 15 billion of Dogecoin has traded hands on the world's most reputable exchanges, compared to 10 billion for Bitcoin and 22 billion for Ethereum. Doge is liquid enough to support significant investment. 
This is the history of Doge. You see that cutie cutie Shibu Inu? Oh, yeah. Wow. What you doing? So scare. Concern. Keep your hands away from me. It's meme stuff, guys. If you don't know what that is, you're going to have to just learn. Get used to it. Learn about the meme. Launch in Dogecoin. Dogecoin was created in 2013 by Jackson Palmer. He was an employee in Adobe Systems Marketing. You know Adobe, right? Adobe Reader, Acrobat, PDFs, Adobe Systems, right? They do paint, you know, stuff too, like Photoshop, uh, uh, Adobe After Effects. They do a lot of stuff. Billy Marcus, he was an IBM software engineer. He was part of it too. The pair literally created the currency as a joke to literally capture the spirit of a popular meme at the time, which was the Doge. The Doge meme pictured uh, uh, this quizzical Shibu Inu, the Shiba Inu with multicolored text in like Comic Sans font, depicting the dog's inner monologue. So you see the dog, the, the Shiba Inu is gazing like, like, mm, he's doji sideways at you. And he's going, mm, much concern. So scare. Hmm. Uh, you know, that kind of attitude, that nonchalant douchey kind of that's the inner monologue of the doge. That's the much wow. The first public mention of Dogecoin occurred in November 28th, 2013, when Jackson Palmer tweeted investing in Dogecoin. Pretty sure it's the next big thing. Palmer uh, has registered www.dogecoin.com on December 4th, 2013, which then provides introductory material for new users. The Dogecoin Genesis block was mined two days later on December 6th with the first known price of Doge established January 23rd, 2014 at 0.0015405 Excuse me. It's a, it's a tiny, tiny number. Designing Dogecoin. Dogecoin is a code base fork of lucky coin. All right. These are all different coding things. I'm going to go through some of this. You might not understand some of this. That's okay. We'll get to more understandable parts. If you need clarification, write it in the comment section below. I'll be happy to respond. Designing Dogecoin. Dogecoin is a code base fork of lucky coin, which itself is a code base fork of junk coin, which was a code base force of Litecoin, which in turn is a code base fork of Bitcoin. Just think family tree. Using the same kind of coding, the same basic framework, they created this new thing. Dogecoin originally launched using the script hash function for its proof of work consensus algorithm before forking to become merge mined with Litecoin in 2014. This means that Litecoin miners could mine Dogecoin simultaneously. They merged their stuff. Blah, 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 blah. It's, you know, you can go through this but none of us understand what it means. So I'm just going to lose you if I keep going through this. So let me see. Palmer commented, he commented initially, we thought, la, 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 early growth on social media. Okay, so we skip forward a little. It's created in 2014, a few months after Genesis, the Dogecoin subreddit, it had 35,000 members, all right? Bitcoin had 2.8 million, Ethereum had 821,000. 35,000 was, you know, was a little minimal thing, but it started growing, you know, underground hit. Everyone who used Reddit had Dogecoin. So guess where it started? Just like the GameStop stonks, it started on Reddit. Donating Doge in 2014, the Jamaican bobsled team. Oh, I thought that was a joke. I thought they were talking about cool runnings. Hey, man, you say you can't believe Jamaica. We have a bobsled team. Cancel me for that, motherfuckers. In 2014, the Jamaican bobsled team qualified for the Winter Olympics. I'm sorry, I'm laughing at my own joke. For the first time in 10 years. I would think it would be longer, but they didn't have enough funding to participate. I mean, John Candy wasn't there to help them. The Dogecoin community, being fans of the movie Cool Runnings, decided to post a Doge address to solicit donations from the community. In just a few hours, Cool Runnings 2 raised $30,000 worth of Dogecoin to support the effort. Later the same year, the community banded together again, this time to sponsor racing underdog Jason Wise. In several NASCAR Cup Series events, after a Reddit user proposed the idea. Over the first year, Dogecoin communities would sponsor many other charitable efforts, including, including supporting the people of Kashmir, Cambodian primary education, uh, access to clean water, Doge for water. Look at all this stuff they were doing for people. That's really awesome. I never heard of any of this. Did you? This is all happening. It's adding their credibility, their humble beginnings, their sincere, good origin story. This is nice stuff. It's happy to know, like, like, when I invest in them, I like to know that they did these good things. I like to know that that they're a humble beginning uh, uh, crypto. 
and they actually were used for some of this. Look, they were these drives were symbolic. The donation uh, donation drives they were symbolic of the Dogecoin community's early ethos, community humor and charity. I like that. Palmer, our ethos is uh, enlightenment, empowerment, entertainment. There's this community humor charity. I like it. Palmer and Marcus did not create Dogecoin because they wanted the cryptocurrency founders or they wanted to be the founders. They didn't create it because they wanted to be rich. Uh, they created it. Uh, 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 and, and the community had no expectation to even make any money from what they created. All right. So it was created just as a joke. Like, really, nobody had any expectations. All right. So the speculation then begins. So it sits right. 2013, it was created. 2014, you got these charities, maybe a little more after. Right. And then speculation begins. So it's sitting. Dogecoin launched just as Bitcoin was making a new all-time high in the bull cycle that preceded the 2017 expansion. Bitcoin peaked at 1,156.14 on November 30th. Could you imagine buying it then? It's like 60,000 now. Uh, just two days after Palmer first tweeted the infamous investing in Dogecoin, pretty sure it's the next big thing. All right. By the end of Dogecoin's first year, at least 33 exchanges had added Dogecoin to their platforms. By our survey, only five of those exchanges still operate today. In order of Doge listing, Polynix, Bitrix, Kraken, HitBTC, and CEXIO. Those are the only ones left out of the freaking 33 exchanges. Well, some survived. The founders then left as Dogecoin, excuse me, as Dogecoin proliferated out of the cryptocurrency exchange ecosystem, the founders became disillusioned. Dogecoin had become a tool for speculation rather than just crypto for sillies, as it was intended. The founders left the project. Marcus said, when someone puts 20,000 in, it makes him very, very uncomfortable. I don't want to be the leader of a cult. They just couldn't see the future, unfortunately. Palmer unsubscribed from the Dogecoin subreddit in 2014. In 2015, Palmer announced that he was taking an extended leave of absence from the cryptocurrency community, calling the ecosystem toxic. Whether for reasons related to Dogecoin or not, he then deleted all of his accounts, his YouTube, Twitter, everything. Everything, all right? So, so the founders leave. And that's what I mean. I was a little early. I was premature. I gave it a little premature shot. But this is where it sits. All right. The founders leave and it sits. So Doge in development, it's a fork of lucky coin, a fork of junk coin, a fork of Litecoin, a fork of Bitcoin. We talked about that. Their core architecture is already known. It's good stuff. Dogecoin's code base was neglected for a few years. Nothing was being done on it. All right. Nobody knew what was happening. And it was just sitting. It was literally like in cryo freeze. That might be why Elon was attracted to it. It was in cryo space. It's like uh, like um, Han Solo in Carbonite, you know? So the year of the Doge, and that's where we're at now. Enter Elon Musk, all right? And that's where you're at. That's where a lot of us are at. And the people jumping in now have no idea what started happening. But Elon Musk, our Tony Stark of the real world, right? He's a celebrity rich scientist. We have an actual Tony Stark. He... He did something about it. He had something to say. He built some hype and brought it back from the dead in a lot of ways. I, I want to read about this to you. Enter Elon. Like many altcoins, Dogecoin lingered on through the years, despite low usage and waning interest from the community. It was not until April 2nd, 2019, when Dogecoin's current champion first made his opinion known. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, replied to a request from the official at Dogecoin Twitter account that someone become CEO and lead us into the future. That's what they asked. Dogecoin literally got on Twitter and said, we need a boss. Our CEOs are gone. Can someone please help us lead us into the future? In response, Elon Musk came out and he said, Dogecoin might be my favorite cryptocurrency. It's pretty cool. You know how he talks. He would continue to post several more times about Dogecoin that day, eventually being granted the role of CEO. This is all like through trolling and people talking crap on Twitter and memes. That's what's happening. This is literally, that's what I mean by 2019, 2020, 2021. The world has changed. We can't just look at investments like, like charts of numbers and maybe you know, we can rely on it because this statistic or this metric. Now we have people like Elon Musk effect. We have a whole new world, a whole new way way of invest a whole new way of thinking right when was the last time we had celebrity scientists if you knew when if you know and look i'm not talking like neil degrasse tyson he's a celebrity scientist but man he's not a rocket man 
He's not Elon Musk, right? Like, I love Neil deGrasse Tyson, but I feel like Neil deGrasse Tyson wouldn't build the Iron Man suit. I feel like Elon Musk might. Enter Elon. Like many altcoins, all right? Dogecoin did all of this, right? He asked to be the CEO. They made him the CEO, not a real CEO, but the meme CEO, right? Look, I'm going to zoom in and show you these. It shows this big square right here. If you are watching, you can see the memes. Dogecoin put out, we have listened to your concerns. We have decided that Dogecoin does not need a CEO and it, or does, sorry, does need a CEO. And if you're listening and not watching, you have to come watch this to see the memes. I'm showing pictures right now. All right. I'm showing them. You just go on to Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E. -E. I'm on Rumble as well. I'm on BitChute. I'm all, I'm on YouTube if you really have to go through there. But guys, Odyssey is great. Find me there. American underscore Reveille. If you want to see this, we have listened to your concerns. We have decided that Dogecoin does need a CEO, someone who can lead us to the future while maintaining the core values of what we are. Below are the candidates. Vote wisely. So they put all these people, and Elon Musk was one of them. And of course, Elon Musk responded. He said, Elon, Elon said, Dogecoin might be my favorite cryptocurrency. It's pretty cool. Then Dogecoin, responding to that, said, looks like you're the CEO now, Elon Musk. Oh, wait, he didn't do that yet. What else did he put? He put uh, Dogecoin rules. Oh, maybe he did this after. Anyway, it says, look like you're the CEO now at Elon Musk. DM us where to send the access codes. And then Elon Musk wrote, uh-oh. And then obviously, look, do you see the picture of the Shiba Inu with the cigarette? It says, drag cigarette, Doge. I haven't heard that name in years. <laughs> That's the point of memes. They're supposed to insinuate something humorous for you. It's funny. He wrote Dogecoin rules. Then he wrote Do uh, Dogecoin value may vary. He's putting these things out. All right. So COVID crypto and Elon Musk. Fast forward a few years to 2020. COVID-19 has ravaged the globe, sent communities everywhere into lockdown. People turned to new TV shows like Tiger King, use Zoom to stay in touch with friends and family, and adopted viral social media platforms like TikTok to share memes and humor. And this is what I was telling you about how the world has changed. And there's different ways to look, different ways to invest now. I'm trying to save you from problems in the future, guys. Bitcoin's third halving occurred as global monetary authorities embarked on an unprecedented loosening. The halving reduced Bitcoin's issuance schedule at the perfect moment to draw a contrast with the actions of central banks, helping spark renewed interest in Bitcoin as a macro asset. Fiscal spigots opened worldwide in an attempt to stem losses from unemployment. Crypto saw massive inflow from both institutions and a homebound retail population, while mobile apps like Robinhood, which supports Dogecoin trading, saw huge growth in retail usage. At the same time, Dogecoin's community-appointed CEO began tweeting heavily about Doge. Below is a sample of the most viral Dogecoin tweets from Elon Musk, the world's wealthiest person and owner of the 23rd most followed, followed Twitter account with 52.4 million followers. All right, guys. And honestly, I think Elon's about to be a whole hell of a lot richer. If you really look at the things he's invested in, if you really dig deep enough, he's going to be the world's first trillionaire very, very soon. You'll see. Look at all of these fun things that he put in here. It's so fun. I hope Cybertruck at Doge mode is awesome. Elon Musk wrote Doge coin mode. It's inevitable. Look at this. The Shibu Inu dust storm, Dogecoin standard, and the global financial. So he's going to destroy. If the dollar crashes and you have other forms of currency, you will be okay, folks. Who let the Doge out? Dogecoin is the people's crypto. I'm reading. For those who are listening, I'm reading all these Elon tweets. I'm trying to describe what they look like. Elon wrote, no need to be a, gi uh, a giga chad to own. And then it shows, it shows him as Rafiki lifting little Simba with the doge head. And it says, you're welcome. And then it says, literally, literally shows the doge on the moon. I know he's going to, when, when he goes to the moon, like there are things that are happening. And him bringing things to the moon, right? And putting things on the moon. Like he's going to eventually put a doge coin on the moon. That's going to be another big thing. I mean, I really believe it, but it's coming. It's not here yet, but it's coming. And then, of course, on the lower right there, you see the Doge Father May 8th, which is what we're going into right now. Or if you're watching this in the next 24 hours or so, it's already happened, which uh, could do something as um, 
a lot of the skits and things are supposed to be very interesting. Um, there's a leaked script that came out, at least we've heard about it, that they're supposed to do something with Dogecoin and the moon or Mars or something. I, I have no idea. Uh, I'm obviously going to take notes during it and write a little blog about it. I haven't posted one in a long time anyway. By the way, those who are watching, those who are listening, probably didn't notice a difference. But those who are watching, uh, you see the attire change and stuff like that. While I was recording this, my wife banged on the door and there was a, a family emergency with our toddler and, and we had to take care of that. So I'll talk to I'll talk about that at another time. Obviously, I want to concentrate on Dogecoin, on crypto and on certain things like that, because this is going to be a big thing. And um, <clears throat> in another episode, like I said, we'll talk about that emergency. Um, guys, it's going to be interesting. This is a whole new revolutionary world. We're dealing with blockchain, a, a new technology that could significantly change the world. Remember, everything online is centralized right now. It's ran by the kings of Silicon Valley and and blockchain. That technology, if, if evolved correctly, will completely destroy the centralized system and put power back into the hands of the people by be, by basically creating a, a, a self accountable technology. We don't need a centralized power to say this is how we run uh, this currency. The technology does it for us. All right. It's not like a form of AI or anything like that. Nobody needs to get all uh, uh, sci fi about it and weirded out or anything like that. It's not taking over the world. It's a different type of asset. It's a different way for you to control your income, control your, your future in a world that's volatile, where you can't trust what way the dollar is going to go. What, whatever which way and day it is. All right. So with that being said, I wanted to shift this just for a couple seconds. I was going to do two separate two separate uh, 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 styles here, and I'm probably going to re-record the intro to this. So the intro you see will probably be the new one. I save everything, too. So one day I'll put a blooper reel out and all that stuff. But but uh, with Elon Musk going on, it, it's kind of an interesting thing because not uh, uh, like traditional assets right like like traditional assets are are driven in a different way right they're they're driven by popularity yes but they're also valuable based upon something right like gold is something right it's a it's a physical asset silver is a physical asset but more and more so studies are showing that younger folks and the way of the future is digital assets digital currency non-fungible tokens all these different things that we could probably make a million episodes about except we're not a financial channel we're a political channel we're entertainment empowerment enlightenment not money all right but this is a very important thing that's crossing my radar and i think a lot of us people on the right a lot of libertarians conservatives a lot of uh, uh, uh republicans are just missing the boat they're just going to miss the boat. All right. You had a chance in 2009 with Bitcoin. All right. And now we're sitting here looking at this future technology. I recommend a book that I'm uh, reading right now. The book is called Life After Google. They're not sponsoring me. I don't know who uh, who the writer is personally. It's a very great book, though, and it shows and lays out the downfall of Google over the next 10 years, the downfall of traditional computing systems and literally the replacement of the centralized system with the decentralized system backed by blockchain folks. It's going to be an interesting future. And before you blink, before you know it, we're going to be landing people on Mars. We're going to be flying around in the next few years. Your packages are going to be delivered by air. I mean, things are going to get wild and freaky, wild and freaky. So I thought this was important to bring to your attention. Let's jump over here for a second. So Miley Cyrus is going to be on with, with Elon Musk tonight. That's an interesting combination, isn't it? And uh, she was joking about how Elon explained Dogecoin to her ahead of the SNL appearances. And do me a favor, guys, if you're if you're really enjoying this episode so far, subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the like button. All right. Follow me on Gab, Parler, all those places. Parler's been down like for days. It's all wackadoodle. I've been trying to get on Parler. Parlor. It's all fudged up. Don't even worry about it. But if you're on there, I did change. I got on there for a few seconds before it glitched out again and changed the at the James Lane to at American underscore Reveille just so because it was the only one I had where it wasn't the same as everything else. So now you can find me on every platform, every station, everywhere you find this great stuff at American underscore Reveille. That's for video. That's for audio. That's for uh, uh, all that good stuff. Um, 
audio is a little different. Search the American Revely or American Revely podcast. Actually, don't search the American Revely search American Revely podcast. But for everything else, all the actual online social media sites and video sites, Rumble, Odyssey, YouTube, all that crap. American underscore Revely it is. And you can always email me directly at James Lane at American dot com for any questions, any links, anything like that. If you can't find me somewhere, email me directly. I will point you in the right direction. Let's read this a little. This is Jessica Napoli. This came out a couple hours ago. The Tesla CEO is hosting SNL for the first time while Cyrus is the musical guest. <clears throat> Miley Cyrus is the musical guest on Saturday Night Live, along with first time host. Elon Musk, where everybody cried and needed their safe space uh, because we actually have a real life Tony Stark and that hurt their feelings. Apparently, the billionaire businessman's new gig has made waves online with many critics feeling he doesn't belong in Studio 8H. Musk has already joked around by calling himself the Doge father. And by the way, some people call it doggy coin and doggy this and that. I like saying Doge. Doge sounds like I just put on a Gucci fanny pack before I said it. So I like saying Doge. A parody cryptocurrency, Dogecoin, based on the Doge meme in 2013, the Tesla CEO is not shy about his fondness for such coins. In fact, he's apparently been trying to explain its value to Cyrus in a new tweet posted on Saturday morning. The singer wrote what I hear when Elon is explaining the Dogecoin to me. And uh, it's it's actually pretty funny. And I'm not going to play it because it's probably the most annoying thing in the world. You can go on to Fox. All right. And you can go find this article. It's called Miley Cyrus jokes about Elon Musk explaining Dogecoin to her ahead of SNL appearances. You can scroll down halfway and you can listen to Miley Cyrus as Hannah Montana years and years ago practicing la, 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 vocal exercises. And um, and you can do that yourself because I don't want uh, to unintentionally cause any seizures or strokes to my audience. The video attached to the tweet features Cyrus doing vocal exercises before one of her Hannah Montana concerts as a teen. Musk has also been promoting his new Tesla cyber truck on Friday night. The car roamed the New York City streets. Hey, listen, I have like 25,000 Dogecoin. If some reason I wake up one morning and I have like six million dollars, I'm buying a cyber truck. I don't. It's kind of cool. I, I'm sorry. I know. Like, I'm a big Chevy truck guy, but it's kind of cool. The prototype vehicle was put on display in a meatpacking district Tesla store where it remained for most of the day. At night, however, the Cybertruck went out for a test drive and videos on social media showed it driving around the meatpacking district. I, I just anyway, I don't know. I don't have a good joke for the meatpacking district and Dogecoin. All I can say is that the Doge is hungry for the meat of the world. And you, my friends, must go and promote the Doge to the world and feed the beast. All right, folks, it's a uh, it's no joke. It's no lie. This stuff's a big deal. The world's changing. The future's changing. I haven't been interested in Saturday Night Live in a long time. But I'm curious tonight because Elon Musk is a trailblazer. He's out of the box. He's one of the richest, if not the richest man in the world. Uh, and when he cashes in, he's going to be the richest man in history. You wonder how he gets the money and how he's going to get the money to build interplanetary civilizations. Well, just wait till the Doge goes to the moon. Ladies and gentlemen, that's episode 138, 138 with the alternate ending because of the family emergency. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you appreciate me. I'm going to record a couple more tonight. We're going to get uh, some notes taken during the SNL appearance. I'm going to write a good uh, article or blog, get that out in the next day or so. Uh, we got a lot of good stuff coming. The new website coming up in the next month. I'll be in Chicago all week next week for business. Um, it'll give me a little extra time to update the new site. If you're watching, you can take a look. See this guy right here. This is going to be the new competitive website, except it, it's pretty much back in January. It needs to be brought up to date to May, cleaned up a little, some more uh, bling thrown on there in the next couple weeks. We're going to transfer from the old website to the new website. It's packed with SEO. Uh, and we're going to go from like 10,000 views a month to tens of thousands of views. Everything we, we do, anything and everything we do, we're trying to get around the censorship wall, right? So we have to draw more people to the website. So whenever you can, whatever you do, talk about the American Revely, show people about the American Revely, AmericanRevely.com. We've got videos, we've got audio, we've got 
articles and articles and blogs and blogs. I mean, so many good stuff. We had a couple great new releases today. We have an NFT assets artist, con artist, games and uh, inflation. It came out by our new blogger, Flipper Doggy. It's really, really, really good. You should check it out. It's going to take giants to unite the United States of America that came out from MG earlier. Great, great one as well. Same with moving to Florida. Please leave your politics in the blue states you're fleeing. That's a big one. And it's a good one. That came out a couple hours ago. Plus why your vote doesn't count and why it should count. It's the United States of America. Don't you agree it should count? Go to AmericanRevely.com. Check out our articles. Share them on all your social media. I'm banned on Facebook. I'm banned everywhere right now. I need your help to share our articles. Our writing team depends on you. All right, folks? This is going to be bigger than ever, and you need to pay attention. So until then, folks, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor, stick around for a couple minutes. Check out the ad I put together for our sponsor, GetTheTea.com. Had a hell of a lot of stomach issues lately, folks. I'm not going to lie and get the tea. Uh, uh, life change tea from get the tea.com has really helped me. It really has. I've been drinking the hell out of it. Tr trust me. I've been drinking the hell out of it. If you want, if you don't believe me, if it's the difference between you going and trying it and you ignoring it, email me, jameslane at americanrevely.com. I've taken so many pictures of me making and drinking this tea for future like ads and stuff. It's not even funny. The proof's in the pudding and I drink the stuff. So don't double check. Just go to get the tea.com. Try it out. I swear by it. It's American made. It is good stuff. Proprietary blend of herbs that are going to get all the crap out of you. And they're going to it's going to do it gently. It's going to do it well. And you're going to thank me in the end, just like dozens have already. Get the tea.com promo code James free shipping and handling. Stick around for an extra two minutes. Like I said, check out the ad. If you're not convinced now, you will be then patriots. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in episode 140. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, James Lane here, and I want to tell you about Life Change Tea. That's right, Life Change Tea. I have a pack of it right here. Listen, as many of you know, I've been working really, really hard to get back in shape, okay? I, I, I was thinking lately, right? And, and you should probably be thinking about it too. With how crazy everything is, with how unstable the government seems, with all of these socialists, all of this leftist insanity you would just call it insanity who knows when the hell i'm gonna have to run or when i'm gonna have to i, I don't know save my family from something i don't know so I, I was getting fatter and fatter and fatter feeling crappier and crappier and crappier my diet was junk i started by cleaning up the diet i've been working out more and more but i was still bloated i was still gassy i was still feeling crappy and i finally decided to to pull out an old trick in the book all right something that i used for weight loss in the past and it, I was thinking about a cleanse right maybe take something that would help me evacuate my bowels a little bit if you know what I mean but you know what I found what I found was something different I found life change tea all right www.getthetea.com I found this life change tea and instead of a seven day or a 14 day cleanse a three day cleanse what they were offering was a daily a, a tea, like a daily delicious iced tea, not not some kind of weird hot tea or some kind of uh, a nasty tasting thing. No, this was a, a health supplement. All right, I started reading about it, and and they were talking about all these herbs, these ancient herbs, right? This look at this organic blessed thistle herb, malva leaf, organic marshmallow leaf. I didn't even know what the heck a marshmallow leaf was. Apparently, it's for uh, anti inflammatory inflammatory and antioxidants and stuff. I looked some of this stuff up. It's crazy. Uh, 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 milk thistle extract that cleans your liver and kidneys. I mean, there's all these different things in here, but I was happy. I was attracted to it because it was all natural. It was put together in the US, right? Obviously, they've got to get spices from these very special places, not spices, but you know, these these special herbs. They got to get them from special places around the world, but it's all done here. It's packaged, put together and blended accordingly right here in the US. Say, all right and I tried it and it was delicious look at this I'm old school I fill a jug you see this big jug right here and for those listening uh over there on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and everything like that I'm holding this big gallon jug that used to be full of water see those tea bags floating in the bottom there this was full guys but I've been drinking it every day twice a day eight ounces take a listen pour it in the glass Oh yeah, that's not a sound effect. That's real. 
Yes. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, mabuhay to all my Filipino friends out there. Mm. I have the mint flavor. It's actually really good. I really like it. It's yummy. Look, this stuff's good. I can take that right now. I'm going to do two hours of podcast recording after this. It's not like me drinking that's going to send me running to the back. It's gentle. It's good stuff, all right? So it's got all these herbs. They cleanse you out. They make you regular again. They clean the toxins out of your system. They help you uh, clean the extra waste that's been stored up in the colon, the stuff that's not healthy for you, not good for you. It keeps the bloat down. I don't feel so swollen. You know how you feel like swollen sometimes? Your fingers are... Yeah, you don't feel like that. It's gone. It's absolutely gone. So it's good stuff, guys. Listen, you have to go to getthetea.com g-e-t-t-h-e-t-e-a dot com www.getthetea.com www.getthetea.com promo code James folks promo code James that'll get you free shipping and handling it's not expensive it's good stuff all right it helps maintain your health it cleanses your body from all kinds of toxins all kinds of things that can cause colds and flus and different things like that it keeps the bugs out real good uh, uh it it, it, it helps your digestion, all right? Just like I've been saying, my bloats, I feel so much better, guys. I feel so much better. And, and just in this journey that I'm taking to get back in shape, I really feel like it's helping me immensely. It really is. I really think so. So try it out, guys. Life Change Tea. You just saw me drink a bunch of it. You just saw my almost empty jug. That's, by the way, like the third jug. All right. That's not the first jug, not the first jug at all. Trust me. It's good stuff, guys. You're not going to be disappointed. You're going to thank me. All right. www.getthetea.com. www.getthetea.com. Get your life changed. Use the promo code James free shipping and handling. Thanks, guys.